Um, yeah. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here with James Jacob Prash. Uh, Jacob, one of the believers had the question based on 1 Samuel 28. Did the witch of Ender really call up the dead, and who gave her the power to do that? Okay. The Torah specifically forbade the ancient Hebrews from calling on the spirits of the dead or trying to contact the dead. The Hebrew term is ovot, ovot, familiar spirits, familiar spirits. Somebody who is demonically possessed with the spirit of witchcraft has a familiar spirit. Remember, the occult counterfeits the charismatic gifts of the spirit, which are in the Old Testament, but are specifically listed in the New Testament, primarily in the epistle of um, 1 Corinthians. The occult counterfeits this. Uh, extrasensory perception, fortune telling, and these things, they counterfeit predictive gift of prophecy. They counterfeit words of knowledge. Demons can know things and tell people things, and this will counterfeit the gift of knowledge. Again, clairvoyance counterfeits biblical prophecy. Witch doctors, Mormons, spiritists, charismatic Catholics pray in tongues to Mary. All the gifts of the Spirit can and are counterfeited by the occult, particularly in things like shamanism. But this has ancient roots. There is a demonic power that is very real in these things. It is not all leger de ma. It is not all trickery or sleight of hand. It may be that, or it may be a combination of leger de ma and, and, the, and demonically enabled occult practices. It may be a combination of the two, it frequently is. But there is a demonic power in it, and the vote, the legal spirits are real, and God told the Hebrews not to do it. Now, normally what happens in a seance when you have a seance and people call on the dead, it's not the actual dead person. It is a demon. It is a demon imitating, counterfeiting the presence of that person. It's something demonic sent to deceive people. In this unique case of the witch of Endor, however, we have something like what we had at the transfiguration of Jesus. Although Elijah was a man who was raptured without having died, Moses died a natural death and came back and he walked uh, with Jesus and with Elijah. God allowed it in that situation. Well, so too, God allowed Samuel to come back as a ghost, as it were, in order to speak judgment against Saul and the house of Saul. He went to the occult. When a leader goes into the occult, that's usually the last straw. I've seen this with backslidden leaders in the church, one of which was Earl Park. Earl Park had a history of all kinds of false teaching and false doctrine. Made himself a bishop and he got dressed up like a Roman Catholic bishop in this crazy movement with Benson Iahosa and people of that nature. And it was rather bizarre. But he went into necromancy contacting the dead, saying, well, if there's an occult practice of seances and necromancy, and the devil only counterfeits things that are true, there must be a true way to speak to the deceased. And he began having contact, he claimed, with his deceased sister Joan, completely forbidden by the Word of God. What Paul did, instead of beginning with the Word of God, to define what is true and right. He began with the occult to define what's true and right. He didn't look at what's true to find the counterfeit. He began with the counterfeit to try to find something that is true, completely perverse and converse to what the scripture teaches. Well, he went into necromancy, and then right after that, a whole series of moral scandals happened, and he was dead. Just before Benny Hinn got caught strolling down the Via Venuto in Rome with Paula White hand in hand as a married man, before he supposedly has been reconciled to his first wife, Susan, who was arrested for shoplifting in Cape Town, South Africa, among other things. Uh, before that happened with Benny, notice you don't hear much from him anymore. Well, what happened? Well, he got into necromancy. 
he got into going to the graves of Catherine Coleman and people like this and claiming visitation by the departed spirits of the dead. Uh, that was the end of Benny, pretty much. He's fizzled. He's not nearly a small bit of what he want, had once been. His, his show is pretty well <laughs> nearly over. Um, he got caught in a scandal, and Paul was finished. Uh, another example is Paul Kane. Uh, that man is 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 deranged, and it comes out that he's an alcoholic and a homosexual, and so forth. His ministry is over. Um, once somebody goes into necromancy, like Saul did, that is the sign that the end of their ministry is at hand. It may even be the end of their life is at hand. That happened with Earl Bork. He died shortly later, as happened with King Saul. Once they go to that point, into the occult and into necromancy. Now remember, in the Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox and Anglo-Catholic traditions, when they pray to the dead and begin venerating dead saints, that is the sin of necromancy. They are calling on the spirits of the dead. Christ is risen. He is not dead. He is not dead. And there is one intercessor between God and man, Jesus the righteous, not dead saints. They are with the Lord, but they're not our intercessors. Uh, Jesus is our intercessor. Necromancy is very, very serious. People who get into this particular expression of the occult with the seances, if there's any substance to what they're doing, it's a vote. Familiar spirits are at work. That was true of the Witch of Endor. What made that case unique was it was one of the very rare cases where God allowed a dead person to return. There are other times it happened, of course, most famously in the Transfiguration. Uh, but it happened for a specific reason that one time. That is essentially what transpired at Endor. Thank you so much for your question. God bless. Dear friends, greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea. It's an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, the Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, 
all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.